This is a Leica Q3, and my favorite feature is not one that I saw in any reviews. Let's talk about it in this video. We actually picked our Leica Q3 up from the Leica store here in Sapporo, in Japan. I've also transferred back to the lab. It sounded good in the headphones, Marshall gave it the nod, but I don't know if I can trust it. So there's one thing that I'm very excited about in this Q3 that I didn't really see a lot of people mentioning uh, in their reviews, and it is the fact that you can now load looks, Leica looks, onto your Q3. So on the app, and the app is functional, which is nice, you can go in and you can find, so far there's a few film styles or Leica looks, but I'm hoping that over time there will be more and you can load them directly onto your Leica Q3. I'm using the contemporary look in all of the images you're going to be seeing as well as the videos. And I am super happy with the way that this just puts the JPEGs together. I'm very, very, very hopeful that at some point <laughs> that you could get something like a Kodak Gold 200 like a look to put in here. That would be amazing. Uh, if it's officially branded or maybe if they just allow us to start creating these and we can share and trade them on the internet, that would be amazing. I would love to have a bunch of different film styles from the stocks I like to use in my Jeff Gordon 35 millimeter film camera. Yep, this is a real camera and the shutter button is in fact the gas tank. Which one should you go with, the Q3 or the Jeff Gordon 35 millimeter film camera? Find out in this video. The spoiler here adds for additional downforce. We don't have to talk about that again. Like Q3 is a great camera. There's buttons on the back. These buttons allow you to digitally crop your images. Allows you to go from 28, 35, 50, 75 to 90, which means you get a lot of reach. You're able to get to 90 because the, uh, the megapixels in this camera is high. And that's the math. What you're doing when you're cropping digitally is uh, it'll actually be shooting the full size raw file. So if you get it back in the Lightroom, it'll show you the preview of what you shot if you digitally cropped it to 90. But then if you go into the crop tool, you'll actually see the entire image at 28. You're also able to do this in video, but if you go all the way to 90, you're gonna, it's not gonna be the best video. And I was ready to make a video being like, why this camera is the best video camera for, for you, and it's not. So as default, this one comes to your digital zoom, and any of the buttons, any of the function buttons, you actually just hold them down, and it'll give you a bunch of menu options of what you want that button to be. I think this is a very nice way to uh, assign your function buttons for quick changes. So you've probably watched a few of these reviews, maybe you know a little bit about the features. I used this for last week in Japan and I enjoy the camera a lot. I also have used the Q2 for uh, maybe three years now since it's come out. I've used it in wedding photography as well as travel and landscape photography. And I've really enjoyed the experience. Is there a reason to immediately upgrade your Q2 to the Q3? I don't think so. Let's talk about the two negative things first. The screen. I like to operate the screen with this finger here, and you can't, you gotta go under, and it's pretty tight to the camera body. I think that this is from a design perspective that they didn't want the screen to stick out more than it should. I'm gonna say I probably ended up using it 25% of the time, so for 25% of the photos that I took on this trip to Japan, I had the screen flipped out like that. So I do use it, but I need to reprogram my brain on how to use it. The other negative is the same issue that I experienced with the Leica M11. The rolling shutter in electronic shutter mode is, I would consider it to be unusable if you are in a mo movement environment where either you are moving or maybe your subjects are moving. We were going maybe five, 10 kilometers an hour on the tram in uh, Sapporo. And as you can see from this photo, it's uh, the, the curvature is, is quite a lot. So electronic shutter mode, limit it to mechanical uh, and you're going to be a lot happier. Those are the only two negatives that I discovered. I guess price also, and maybe size. Sorry, this wasn't supposed to be just pointing out all the things I don't like about the camera. The size of the camera, I would love to see this with the 35 millimeter Summicron. It is a little bit smaller. I find that this camera is a little bit too big to just put in a small bag and carry with me for the day. Maybe this is just a, a, a me thing, but I do prefer something in the form factor of the Fujifilm X100V or the 100 series that it actually can fit in a jacket pocket pretty easily. Whereas this, you definitely have to go out with the intention to be taking photography because it is a bit of a large size. The 28 millimeter focal length, also my brain, it's fine with it, but I definitely do prefer the 35 millimeter focal length and I find myself shooting in 35 a lot. The examples you're seeing are mostly at 28 uh, because I just wanted to show you kind of the full, full lens. Now let's talk about the three things that separate this camera from the Q2 for me 
One is USB-C charging. It's just very easy. I, I don't need to bring a second battery. The battery life is also quite acceptable for a full day of use. I was doing photography and video and never really had to worry about it. But now you can just bring a USB charging pack and just plug it in that way uh, rather than bringing a full battery charger with you. So that is a huge plus. The grip, so if you wanna charge it wirelessly, that does, you can do that. You just put it down on the charging mat and it'll charge. But you need an additional small grip for that. Um, I'm not going to get that grip. Well, it would be nice. I don't find it that necessary. Uh, USB-C charging is fine for me. You guys notice that the fine for uh, smoking on the street is $10. It's 1,000 yen if you want to smoke on the street. Which sounds more like a ticket price than a fine. I think we're going to come back here later. That looks darn nice. Wow. Now the next advancement is autofocus. I still find it, um, I guess, in comparison. So if, if you're coming from the Q2 to the Q3, the autofocus is going to be better in every situation, but it's not going to be up to a standard like you'd expect from maybe a Sony or Canon mirrorless camera right now. You're going to get pretty close, but it still is a little bit clunky. It also does the weird, I'm, I'm sure there's a, I hope there's a way to get rid of this, but it gives you kind of the glasses and the googly eyes over top of somebody if, you're, if you have face and eye detect on. I also find that the integration of face and eye detect, um, I, I'm sure that there will be advancements in the future, but it will identify a lot of things that are not humans. Uh, for instance, a wine bottle will be like, that's a face. I know it's a face and it, it'll focus on it and it's a little bit challenging to override sometimes. I hope that that continues to improve. This still is the, the time of release and these cameras do get better over time, but it will identify some things as faces that are definitely not faces. If you are somebody who shoots manual focus, maybe this doesn't matter to you, point number two at all. And then the third point is the one that I already mentioned, the film looks and simulations that you can bring into this camera. And I'm hoping that that library continues to grow. Ergonomics of the Q3. I think if you have a wrist strap, this is one of the paracord ones, I think that this makes it a very ergonomic camera. I find when I have the regular full-size strap that it needs the thumb grip, or I prefer the thumb grip at least, so maybe look at one of those if you are feeling that this maybe just doesn't fit your hands correctly. Um, but I will say that having this and using it kind of in this way, uh, I'm very, very happy with it. You get one card slot. I was hopeful that they would also do an internal backup and I'm hoping that this also comes to the M11, but for me as a wedding photographer, I love to have just that backup redundancy. I also haven't had any issues with SD cards in a very, very long time, but just from peace of mind, it's, it's nice to know that I do in fact have some sort of backup going. If I am at an event like a wedding that I've been hired for, if I am out doing something like travel or street photography, this isn't really important to me, but for wedding and family coverage, it definitely is. The menu system is very easy to navigate and I would still consider it to be one of the best menu systems in photography. Um, very, very nice. And the camera comes set up, I'd say to 90% of what I would just be shooting it as kind of every single day. If you're not gonna be doing video, one of the small feature buttons up here comes map to video so you can override that. And to change that, all you do is hold down the button and then you can just select whatever, whatever you want it to be. When it comes to automatic settings like shooting in aperture priority or the white balance selections, Leica does an amazing job. Leica will actually select better white balances than I would. I typically, I like a warmer profile. So I will shoot most of my cameras on shade white balance. And with Leica cameras, I prefer to just allow the camera to do whatever it wants to interpret the scene as. I do feel like a lot of the time it, it makes a better decision than I would if I had to do it manually. When it comes to auto exposure, uh, I believe it comes set uh, out of the box to spot. So if you're noticing that you're, you're quickly turning your camera on and trying to get a photo and it's kind of all over the place, it might still be on spot metering. I changed it to multi-field and I've been very happy with the camera decisions after that. So the Leica Q3, should you upgrade your Q2? Depends what you're using it for. For me as a wedding photographer, the autofocus advancements make me a little bit happier. It's a little bit easier to use and having the USB-C charging makes me pretty happy. The contemporary looks also very, very nice to have and I'm hoping that more of those start coming down the pipe, specifically actual Kodak or Fuji film simulations. You're going to be very, very happy 
with the image quality as long as you're not shooting electronic shutter in a moving, fast-paced environment. But everything other than that, you're going to be very, very happy with. And there it is, the Leica Q3 here in Tokyo. Should we do a, a me walking away from the camera, a closing shot? Wow, we're artists.